sound matters. Be heard. Welcome to the podcast where you get exclusive behind the scenes tips to make your own show sound truly spectacular. This is Podtastic Audio. Hey, what's happening? How are you doing? How is your podcast coming along? I am Chris and I am from the original Chris and Christine Show podcast. You can find out every single thing about that show on a website, which I built all by myself. Yeah, check that out at chrisandchristineshow.com. And there's a link to it in the show notes of this episode and every single episode. I drop it on down there for you. And I want to say thank you so much for joining me today on this podcast. I do the show for you and I appreciate you tuning in each and every episode that I make because I do make the show for you. I don't make it for me. I make it for you so you can create a better podcast. So today on Podtastic Audio, we're going to talk about how to avoid podcast burnout. Just this morning, you know, I live on the West Coast, so a lot of my listeners live either on the East Coast or in Europe and other places around the world. So when I wake up in the morning, I look at my iPhone and I got all kinds of like messages and DMs and emails and I'm going through them as I wake up in the morning, drinking my coffee, looking at all the messages and I'm like going through them all. And I had these messages come through this morning and it was from another podcaster and he was complaining about his show and he didn't know what to do with it. And he felt like he was just getting burnt out on creating a podcast. Like it was just getting too much. Now he did an exclusive interview style of a show, like interview only kind of thing, which is fine. You can do your podcast however you want to do it. It's your show. You are the captain of your show. Don't let me or anybody else out there tell you how to create your podcast unless you are physically working for a company or agency and they tell you exactly how to do the show. If they are the ones in charge, then it's just like another job. You got to fall in line. And you got to do whatever you're told to do. But how do you or how do us as the independent podcasters that we are, like I don't work for a company. I don't work for an agency. I don't work for anybody else. I create the show that I want to create. And you probably also create the show that you want to create because you enjoy podcasting. And you enjoy talking about your perfect content. But we all hear about pod fading. And what is pod fading and how do you really avoid it? Now, pod fading really is is when your podcast does not bring you any joy anymore. You, it, it gets too hard to do. Or perhaps maybe you do a show with co-hosts and they can't make it for whatever reason. So the episodes kind of, uh, you put them off for a while. Like, well, I'll get back to it when I get back to it, you know? So you kind of put off episodes and then eventually the show just disappears and you don't make any more episodes. And a year goes by, and then two years go by. You're like, oh yeah, remember the time we did a podcast? And it becomes something in the past versus something you're doing in the present. When you first launch your podcast and you're on episode one or figuring out episode one, it's all new and exciting. It's like this brand new toy. You go all in. Maybe you buy a microphone. Maybe you don't. Maybe you try the whole like, we're going to do it on the webcam thing or whatever and realize that it sounds like crap and people aren't listening. Yeah, that's another story for another day. But you realize that it does take a lot of work to physically make an episode every single day. And there's days where you're like, you do, I don't want a podcast. I just don't feel like it. I've got so many other things on my plate. I've got my job. I got my kids. I've got soccer practice, baseball practice. I've got this thing, that thing, whatever it is. And podcasting becomes kind of like, you know, the bottom of the list of things to do. And that's probably why if you think about during the COVID lockdowns of 2020, you know, a lot of podcasters started during 2020 because they were bored had nothing else to really do. Their entire day of things to do really got limited with no job to go to or anything like that. Plus you're working from home a lot. Why not make a podcast? And this new toy called like Zoom conferencing, which we all kind of figured out how to use during COVID and you realize, oh, wait, I'm using this for my job. I wonder if we can do a podcast using the same technology. We already have the stuff. Let's just do it. And that's kind of how a lot of these podcasts all started. But on today, we're going to tell you how to keep that momentum going 
even though you do not feel like podcasting anymore? How do you avoid the podcast burnout? So I have seven different ways that you as a podcaster can avoid burnout with your show. So starting off with number one, set realistic goals for your podcast. Yeah. You see, if you set unrealistic expectations for your podcast, like thinking I'm going to get 10,000 downloads by episode 20, or I'm going to have a show that I'm going to do every single week, or I'm only going to interview A-list celebrities. Dude, keep it real. Let's get realistic here. Chances are that's not going to happen right at the beginning. And even if it does get there, there's going to be good weeks and bad weeks. So I would suggest setting achievable goals, like maybe doing a podcast every week if you physically can do that. Let's start for the basics. Let's get the band back together and make an episode. Start with an achievable goal. That will take off the pressure of creating crazy goals like I'm going to be number one in Apple tomorrow. Come on, get real here. So the number two way to avoid burnout is to create a consistent schedule. You want to establish a schedule that you physically can keep up with every single episode, whether it's weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, however you do it, daily. If you think you really could do a daily show, you got nothing else going on, you got the time to do it, go all right ahead. But daily shows can really burn you out very quickly. Those who have tried daily shows, they are the first ones to burn out and they will decide to choose maybe a weekly or bi-weekly episode and relax. You are an indie podcaster. You do not have to release an episode every single week. You can go bi-week, weekly. You can change it up. It's up to you. But seriously, consider setting a realistic schedule on how you can and physically release an episode. The third tip I have for avoiding podcast burnout is when you do physically create your podcast episodes, try batch recording them. Now, batch recording podcast episodes are things that I have not really done. I've batch recorded previous guest interviews because we don't release the episodes for the interview on the same day we record them. We usually batch them if we have a bunch stacked up, but you can still do that with regular episodes. You sit down if you have the time. That that all depends if you actually have the time to do this, but say you have a Saturday that's free, nothing else going on. You could sit down there for four or five hours and physically go through and record a few episodes, five episodes or whatever it is. You can sit there and record them all, have them batched up, ready to go. That way you have multiple episodes in the can so that when you do have moments where you're like not feeling like, I don't feel like podcasting today, I don't feel like it, you already have those episodes you know, stashed away, ready to go in advance. Now, the only downside to batch recording, the thing that I'm not a big fan of is if something happened today, like something did happen today as I'm talking about this on this episode, You can't pull that off if you batch record episodes because these episodes would have been recorded a while ago. So if something's happening in the news or something happening on social media, happening right now live, you can't mention it on your episode because it was from, say, months ago in the past. It also helps if you're going to do batch recording podcast episodes is that the content is kind of evergreen. It's meaning that you can listen to that episode at any time, at any point, and the value of the content involved in the episode is still the same no matter when the podcast was physically played. Okay, so moving on to number four, delegate and outsource. Now, what does that really mean? It means that if you cannot spend time editing your episodes, hire someone else to really do that. Although I do not do that and um, I enjoy the editing process. I enjoy that kind of stuff, but I do realize that it does take some time to do that. And I know that a lot of us, most podcasters starting out, don't have a clue on how to even edit anything. I didn't when I first started. I didn't know any of this stuff. I didn't know how to really record anything either. So most people, they'll record their show in Zoom or whatever. You know, Usually it's a video conferencing tool of some kind. And they'll get all that figured out, have great questions for their guests and all that fantastic stuff. But it comes to the physical creation of the podcast, like putting it together, make it sound great and look great. They don't have a clue what they're doing. So you either have more time or you have more money. 
you usually pay for one or the other, what you have more of. So if you have more money than time, just go ahead and outsource those responsibilities to somebody else. Okay, moving on to number five. Now, number five really can be for almost anything, not just podcasting, but number five is prioritize self-care. You got to take care of yourself. That means you got to be sleeping right. You got to be exercising right. You got to be you know, healthy. You got to make sure you take care of yourself outside of podcasting to avoid podcast burnout. See, podcasting should not be your first priority. It should be you know, after you take care of all the things that you physically have to take care of to function. Because if you're not functioning well and you're not healthy, then what's the point of creating a podcast? That's probably why people do burn out is they try to put the podcast ahead of themselves and they their health suffers, obviously. And then your mental health can also suffer too, which obviously leads to podcast burnout. So the number six way to avoid podcast burnout is set some boundaries because you have your personal life and your personal space and you have your podcasting space and podcasting world. You should probably keep the two separated because sometimes you're letting your podcasting stuff encroach on your personal time. You really need to communicate these boundaries with your listeners, co-hosts, and collaborators that I don't do interviews on this day or that day. I don't take uh, do podcasting on this day because I spend it with my family, or I only do podcasting on that day. If you set like parameters on the days that you physically are going to do any kind of podcasting work, then it will help you avoid podcast burnout. And now the number seven way to avoid podcast burnout and my absolute personal favorite is stay inspired. Literally, you know, continuously seek inspiration for your podcast, explore new topics and formats and interviewees and always keep evolving and changing. Do not be afraid to change your podcast format. I've changed this show a bunch of different ways, although the ideal core content has pretty much stayed the same. I have mixed up sound effects. I've mixed in different intros. I've had different guests on the show, but always, always staying within the core idea of podcast and podcast creation. That is the core heart of the podcast that I'm doing, Podtastic Audio, which is helping you make a better podcast through audio and storytelling and making sure it sounds great and all that wonderful stuff. But like I said, I mix things up. Don't be afraid to change your podcast up. You can change your podcast any way you want. You can change the name. You can change the artwork. You can change the type of people you have on your show. You can have no people on your show. You can do a million different things. And that is the exact example that I was telling that other podcaster this morning on ideas of how to do his show. You see, his show was exclusively an interview only show. Now that's fine. You can do that. That's great. But what do you do when the guests are becoming very, very boring? Like, you do the guest because you feel obligated to have a guest on your show. But first off, just because you have a podcast does not mean you have to have a guest on your show. You can do a solo show. You can do a mixture of both. If you're going to have guests on your show, why not mix it up? Maybe do every other episode, a guest interview, and then a solo episode on the other off episode. Or maybe, you know, you can do... Uh, I suggested this thing to him. I said, why don't you do a biography podcast about people that you want to know more about? That way, you're still doing the same concept about interesting people, but you can do a biography and then you can do, a, do it about anybody you want. You don't have to wait for you know Steven Spielberg to be available to be on your show. You can do a biography podcast about Steven Spielberg or whoever you want dead or alive, it doesn't matter. If your podcast is truly about inspiring people, then create the show that you want to create. It's your show. Have fun. The sky is the limit. You don't have to wait for them to come to you. You can create things for people. Remember, it's your show. Have fun. Don't let anybody else tell you how to create your show. And if it's not working out, you always can change things up just a little bit, just enough to keep you inspired, just enough to make it fun and interesting. You remember when you first launched your podcast? Do you remember how much fun you had on that very first episode or second episode? 
and the first few episodes, maybe even getting guests, or if you weren't doing guests, maybe talking about your topic or your niche, and you get so excited about it, just making the episodes, producing them, sending them out, and then watching for maybe some new downloads to come in. You get excited, like, oh, check this out. We got listeners in England and Germany and in Australia. I've never even been to Australia, and they got listeners there. That's incredible. That fun thrill of it all can still happen even at episode 100 or 200 because you have the power to actually change things up a little bit. It's okay. It's your show. I know podcast burnout is a real serious concern, especially on your mental health and your well-being. So please take good care of yourself. And remember that podcasting is not the only thing that is important in your life. So if you notice signs of burnout, such as increased stress, fatigue, or lack of enthusiasm for your podcast, listen, don't hesitate to take a break, seek support, or make necessary adjustments for your podcasting routine. Hey, thank you once again for listening to this episode today. You know, I really, really appreciate it. That makes me smile so much. But you know what would make me very happy? is if you gave me a honest review on your favorite podcast player, whether it's Apple, Spotify, Joe Blow's House of Podcasts. I don't know which one you use. But if you could give me an honest review about the show that I've created to help you, that would be awesome. Thank you so much. And I will catch you on the next episode.